Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we are joined by Dr. Marvin Hausman. And uh, Dr. Hausman, uh, there's a lot of research going on at your company. Uh, we have uh, developed, of course, uh, with the uh, amazing research that you've done, the uh, Myco D2, which is uh, literally the, if you want to call it the flashing light emitting diode to tell the uh, stem cells to get off the freeway of the bloodstream, to go and tunnel into tissues and to differentiate in the spinosa cell layer in the skin, to tunnel into heart, brain, and into organelles, and is the primary activator of the whole stem cell cell rejuvenation system. Uh, the uh, telederm cream, of course, we know the research has already been showing that it significantly lowers insulin resistance. It helps tissues regenerate and also helps repair the DNA uh, due to things like sunlight with the telederm. Um, the research is ongoing in terms of looking at things like telomere length, the extracellular matrix, which are a series of proteins and enzymes that uh, are the scaffolding for stem cells, but the primary activator that gets the whole process going is ergothionine and the ergothionine transporter. Can you give us the latest research on what's happening? Well, I think, God, you, you should work for the company, Bill. I can't believe you. You have a vast knowledge. When I tap into your knowledge, I, I get rejuvenated. And that's a good word, rejuvenation, because yeah. the whole world wants to be rejuvenated, and that's stem cells. There's no question about that. Um, I think what you've, you've really just put it into a nutshell, which is beautiful, about the extracellular matrix being the scaffolding. And you can have, I mean, humans are, not, what are we, 70% water? So you can have, it's amazing how we can hold together being 70% water, how important the extracellular matrix is. And then around the extracellular matrix are the stem cells. And we talked about the stratum spinosum. So we've identified with our German colleagues in, 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 in the University of Cologne that the ergothionine transporter resides in the stem cells of the stratum spinosum. And so right. these stem cells are what's creating your barrier, your epidermis, to protect you against the onslaught of all these toxic products that we live in. You know, pollution, noise, radiation, um, uh, sunlight, it, it goes on and on and on. So without the ergothionine transporter, you probably would not have your integument, your hair, your nail, and your skin. And so I think what we're developing, and the the other thing, which is very significant, Bill, at the uh, the FASEB meetings, which are the biology meetings, the they're the world-renowned uh, experimental biology meetings, they showed yesterday. Dr. Hollick in Boston stated that. Supplements of D2 and D3 are not as good as taking D2 from mushrooms. He showed in yeah. humans that D2 in mushrooms is equal, if not better, than taking supplements because of the cofactors. In addition, he made the statement that mushrooms produce D3. I didn't know that until yesterday. I thought only skin produces D3, but he made the statement that mushrooms produce D3 as well, probably not as much as the skin. So we're sitting on a revolution in rejuvenation of skin, rejuvenation of hair, and rejuvenation of nails. Yeah, I, what I think is we're looking at what I call the biological singularity. Uh, one of the uh, things that was put forward by President Kennedy was the idea of giving the nation a vision, a vision of going out into space and putting a man on the moon. Uh, but the fact is, until you conquer the biology of what life is and aging, you can't do space exploration because as soon as you get away from the human resonance of the planet that rings our DNA, until you understand the process of cellular rejuvenation, because... I ask someone their age and they say, well, I'm 42 or I'm 52 or I'm 32. I said, no, you cannot be older than 10. And they say, what do you mean? I said, well, all of the tissues in your body, right down to your bones, have to be rebuilt. And the oldest tissues in your body are probably your neurons. They may be an exception, but you even have neurocytes making new neurons and even neural connections. So basically, most of your body, except for your neurons, have been rejuvenated and regenerated. <clears throat> and uh, it, it's on a template. That template requires the a water molecule which is acts basically as an informational solvent because it allows the phonon maser waves to carry scalar signals through things like matrix metalloproteinases, cryptochromes which uh, sense light, etc., uh, laminins that help the structural proteins of the cell, and these act as transducers of signal. Uh, the ergothionine is a primary <coughs> signal me messenger that actually tells the whole process to get started. It's almost like walking into the factory and throwing the master switch 
And when that happens, the whole process of cellular regeneration starts. If that process isn't going on or isn't done in a timely fashion, you can't rebuild heart muscle, brain, liver, kidney, peripheral nerve, anything. And uh, uh, the neat thing about your research is you can show even the activation of the ergothionine transporter to show that if that process is robust, then the uh, healing of the tissues is robust. If it's not present, there is no healing. Uh, so it's the primary, if you want to call master switch in the regeneration factory. Well, you know, that that's really key here. Um, you, you've got to every day, and most of us are starting too late. I hope it's not too late for me because I'm 71 years old. But we should be thinking about this, as you said, at age 10, age 15, because every day we're losing millions of cells, and every day we have to replace those millions of cells. And the one day we replace less than one million cells, we're aging. And it gets well, I think it's also, compounded. It gets worse think, and worse and worse. And as you said, we don't need embryonic stem cells. We need to have our adult stem cells, and we need right. to stimulate them. And the telomere length, the tail on our DNA, is what's key to how long we can live. And so we need yeah, to I, detoxify I, our body, and you and I have talked about that. And we need to start thinking, did we feed our stem cells when we go to sleep at night? Did we yeah. take the right products into our body to allow us to increase the or keep our DNA tail length and most of us don't even think about that. All we do is we need immediate gratification and we take life for granted and we run out. I mean, if you go out at noontime, you, I mean, the, the cars surrounding McDonald's go around the block at a certain hour yeah. of the day, which is, means it's fast food, immediate gratification and immediate yeah. gratification leads to aging. I think if you were to look at it as a mathematical process of signal to noise and a number of cells are repaired in the telomere length, telomeres, I think, are probably an epiphenomena that indicates the amount of ECM that the cells can regenerate. So if you were to sample cells and tissues and look at ergothionine transporter, telomere length, and extracellular matrix, including these enzymes like matrix, metalloproteinases, and cryptogromes, etc., you'd find that all three are parallel. So the telomere is almost like a good marker to see that the other things are functioning. Uh, the real process, though, is that if you can actually repair more cells and are damaged each day, you don't age, you actually de-age. And I think one of the things that we think of is that aging is inevitable, but when you look at it mathematically rather than biologically, uh, you have a number of stem cells, even in your 80s and 90s, that are identical in health and genetic uh, lack of, of damage as a newborn, and which means even if it's only 2 or 5%, uh, the body always has the capacity to regenerate itself. It just needs the right signals in order to do that, the right cofactors, the right uh, processes in order to assist that, so the rate of repair exceeds the rate of damage. And then the actual process of aging, like whether it's cardi cardiac congestive heart failure, Alzheimer's disease, where you get upregulation of inflammatory pathways and neuron cell dropout, and Parkinson's disease, uh, peripheral neuropathy, uh, liver dysfunction, any condition whatsoever, it's basically a localized organ where the life process is not being regenerated faster than the degradation. It's almost like the rate of rust in a particular machine part is occurring faster than the person can repaint on the, the anti-rust uh, agents. Whereas if you okay, can Bill, reverse before, that before process. the break, let's talk next when we have time about skin, which the people see, metalloproteinases, right. and you say rust. Iron plus three is rust. We right. have rust in our body, we have rust in the skin, and iron is part of the metalloproteinase system. Please right. tell us what you think, how this interacts. Absolutely. Back in a minute, iron, of course, is the time bomb. Uh, unbound iron and other heavy metals. And a free radical activation is the primary thing that activates mitochondrial degradation, telomere shortening, and loss of ECM. Back in a moment. Welcome back. And um, what's important about this is the right supplements you take determine whether or not you turn on you know, the good books, if you want to call it, or chapters of the library of your DNA. But it also creates new sequences of DNA. There's research from the Zone of Alienation around Chernobyl that the animals not just didn't just have point mutations and random, but they had intelligent readaptation of gene sequences and new transcription that created new DNA so that these animals, for example, the mice were able to leap like kangaroos. Uh, the beaver became super adapted. The uh, the moose, etc., and all the animals around the zone of alienation in areas where you'd expect 
them to, to be dying. In fact, they've developed super adaptations to high levels of radiation and actually sped up their, if you want to call it, intelligent recreation. Uh, I don't like to call it evolution because it's not evolving on a random point mutation model, but on an intelligent redesign based on the stressors uh, or the positive influences of which nutrients are present. And that's why the toxins in our environment are changing our genetics. Just like if you have a father, they've proven now for three generations, if the father is uh, overeats uh, sugary things and becomes diabetic and then reproduces, he increases the risk of diabetes up to three generations uh, in, by epigenetically altering the genetic sequences that are transmitted on in his sperm to his children and grandchildren. And uh, I think what ergothionine does is it not only bulletproofs the parent, but it also the children of that parent and helps to protect against the epigenetic silencing of gene sequences and helps the transcription of new sequences to adapt to environment too. Well, then we ought to take these uh, mice that jump like kangaroos and see if they have higher levels of the ergothionine transporter. Guaranteed, if you got some animals or tissues from the zone of alienation, you'd find these animals had higher levels of enzymes to protect against radiation. They're radio resistant, and they'd have high levels of, of uh, ergothionine transporter and uh, they'd also have higher levels of ECM able to adapt to these uh, functions. So the weaker animals would have been killed off. The stronger ones would have had the genetic capacity to adapt to the environment. Well, we, and, can, uh, we can definitely measure that. There's no question. Let me, let me come back to that the question I asked you. You know, I, when you watch an iron rust, it's a gate. You watch iron right. rust. We have rust in our body, and it's put into different locations. And, and the body protects itself by taking iron plus three, which is rust, and puts it into components where it's somewhat soluble and can circulate around. And then when we need it, it goes to plus two. But bring me into your knowledge about the skin and metallic metalloproteinases because would you define iron plus three as a metalloproteinase? Uh, well, the iron three is necessary to form heme in your hemoglobin, but the problem is with free iron is, is the, one of the most dangerous oxidants of the Fenton reaction to create hydroperoxy radical. And of course, it doesn't matter if it's in your skin. If you have sunlight and it hits hydroperoxy radical, uh, it causes incredible damage to your skin. So the same thing with certain drugs. If you take certain drugs, they're uh, light sensitive, especially ultraviolet uh, B, C, and D. And there's two new bands of ultraviolet radiation since 1992 in our sunlight to Earth because of the thinning of the ozone layer. That results in higher energy light that actually can impinge on our cells. And if you have free iron in your skin, it increases the Fenton reaction in hydroperoxy radical, which causes DNA damage. And the primary thing that reverses that is vitamin D2 and D3 and the ergothionine transporter that repairs the DNA damage because you get DNA adducts where the uh, DNA crosslinks and you get thymidine dimers as well as uh, DNA um, uh, oxidation of the uh, primary, the uridine uh, component of DNA, of uh, RNA. Yeah, but how does the metalloproteinase influence your extracellular matrix? <clears throat> well, the matrix metalloproteinases uh, are the primary buffer against uh, these uh, free heavy metals that can cause oxidative reactions. And so, with so, the, so iron, iron is a free heavy metal, so it would cause oxidation right. reactions, as you said, by yeah. the Fenton reaction. We right. have and evidence why, now that if we yeah. knock out the transporter, we get high levels of free radicals. Now, we haven't published this yet, so the Germans did it, and we're going to be coming out with a paper on that, but one of the highest levels occurs in the skin, in the barrier against damage from radiation, from UV light. So when you right. knock out the ergothionine transporter, your highest level of free radical accumulation is in the skin and the animal model we use. And that fits in with exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and most people aren't aware that the connection between the cytochromes and your, and your uh, mitochondria to actually transport and convert uh, oxidative uh, degradation through the Krebs cycle um, and the glycolysis cycle the, uh, the, uh, is basically an iron containing molecule associated with vitamin B1, B6, etc. and manganese and so iron is a necessary component but it's also dangerous it's almost like uh, you, the, the mitochondria generate a fire of free radicals and to buffer those is things like myco D2 and uh, the telederm cream in the skin act as almost a radiator to cool the mitochondria, to cool this free radical, the sparks that are flying off the mitochondria in the cells, especially when it's impinged by ultraviolet light and ionizing radiation. So in, in a sense, it's the radiator of the cells, the, 
the D2 and D3? Well, Joe, we may have the nuclear reactor cooling system. Yeah, it's like the, um, it's like the, know, like the uh, ergo this, and vitamin D2. It's the cause, for example, of Fukushima was a Taurus cooling system failure with the hydrogen buildup that caused hydrogen explosions because they made a faux engineering design. We talk about that every Thursday with our nuclear expert, Chris Harris. Um, the um, cell basically is overheating, and of course, if you've got mineral deficiencies, if you've got free radical oxidant deficiencies, if you've got uh, nutraceutical deficiencies where the, those particular nutraceuticals are not inducing the enzymes to protect, and if you've got genetic weaknesses uh, or deficiencies in vitamin D2 and D3, D2 especially, you're not going to be able to cool those free radical streams, and eventually you get mitochondrial degradation, and the mitochondria send a secondary signal to shorten telomeres and to stop the production of extracellular matrix. So when the ECM drops and the telomere length drops, you get big bloated mitochondria, and eventually you get uh, basically cell apoptosis after a period of uh, lack of autophagy where the cells create new organelles. So the cell stops making new organelles, the telomeres shorten, and the ECM drops, and then the cells and tissues become aged. Uh, Have there been any uh, research articles published on ECM and um, uh, DNA damage? Yeah, yeah, I think there's a ton of stuff. I pulled up a lot of research literature on that, yeah. Oh, but, the, you know, this is fascinating because this fits in with everything we're doing together with Myco D2, with, tele, you know, with the telioderm that we're doing now, the skin cream. Uh, so yeah. we're rejuvenating the stem cells that create the extracellular matrix, that create, um, you know, your keratin, the keratinocytes. Right. Uh, so we're, we're there. We're at the basic structure of the house. You can't build the house yeah. without what we have. Right, and you're doing some research, too, that's going to allow us to use one of the components of the ergothionine uh, in our eye formula because, for example, when you get eye damage, most people don't realize the rate of cataracts of uh, pterygian, which is a scleral uh, inflammatory process that creates neovascularization that can cross the visual axis where it grows across this kind of a funny-looking yellowish white, almost blue, with sometimes blood vessels can grow across the visual axis. That's actually caused by ultraviolet light. Uh, and the reason is the ultraviolet light now is much more toxic than it was in the past. There's new uh, solar bands of high energy ultraviolet light in the C and D class that weren't present before 1992. And uh, are you sure so about racist, that? Wait, wait, wait. Did that, when did that? When did you find out about that? Uh, last year, I had one of my scientists on that uh, identified the research that uh, since 1992, there's two new high energy bands in the C and D class that weren't present before that. What, 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 what they're called, C and D? C and D, yes. I call it A for tanning, B for burn, C for cancer, D for death. Quantum Functional Medicine, and book one will be coming out. The whole idea of my theory about what cell biology is and what life forms are in aging is uh, considerably different than what I was taught in medical school. It's more based on quantum physics and scalar biology and the idea that DNA and cell membranes, the membrane I call MEM, hyphen BRAIN, is a bidirectional informational system that translates environmental stressors and that evolution is not a random process, but it's one that's an intelligent design process based on stressors. And uh, when you use things like ergothionine, you're able to bring an adaptive range where if someone's stressor increases the rate of cell degradation and damage by 50%, which, you know, let's say we pull that number out since the Second World War, the rate of damage and destruction to cells is, say, 50% more. If your repair mechanisms increase by 25% more, you're going to still have accelerated aging. If you were able to take Myco D2, your rate of cell degradation and aging is dampened by the fact that you can adapt to that stressor and you can cope with it. So uh, to me, uh, it's not optional to te for people to take things like Myco D2 and Teloderm Cream. In our current world, we know that the O-methyl uh, phenolic type compounds that are used topically to, to block ultraviolet light cause more cancer in the skin. And the only ways to actually change that are DNA repair and ergothionine transporters to renew the tissues in this spinosa cell layer. Uh, the problem is that 
that our medical system doesn't approach it that way. They don't realize that 90% of all disease is actually disease of aging and a balance of information based on, on rate of repair and rate of degradation of cells and tissues. So that, my theory is that what you discovered is one of the key things of that project called the Methuselah Mouse, where we are eventually reach the terminal velocity where we can actually stop the process we call senescence and aging. Aging doesn't need to occur. It ne it's basically an informational and a, and a nonlinear process that requires the right cofactors to reverse, and I think that you've got a major piece of it. Well, I think so. This is where Entia, you know, I love it. We changed the name to Entia Biosciences. From a, we're still a nutraceutical company, but we're really using modern medicine to define what the problems are with respect to nutrition and how we can reverse that. And I'm excited to be involved with the company. I mean, I, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, it's, I'm proud to be the CEO of Entia Biosciences because we may leave a legacy for mankind in terms of re rejuvenation and anti-aging. Yeah, I, I see it as a, as a combination of things. For example, uh, uh, the use of hyperbaric oxygen, I call the power of one's oxygen, Nutrimeds, which include things to support cellular regeneration, free radical dampening, things like our cell detox, glutathione, collagen max, and our new uh, uh, mountain red velvet that we're working on developing a new form with a special type of capsule that will prevent it from any kind of degradation in the stomach or, or to, to protect some of the very fragile molecules so they get to the target tissue. The MycoD2 is really neat. When I take it, I have what I call a MycoD2 day. Uh, my body basically says, I can get through this day. It's almost like a lubricant for life. You basically aren't stressed when you take your Myco D2. Uh, and you can feel it almost immediately within half an hour after the pills are in your system that it's, your body completely behaves differently. You don't get, uh, I call a startle response uh, from a stressor. Uh, you get through the day much more efficiently. And uh, your sleep is better. You're able to re respond and heal faster from injuries. Uh, it just is completely different. And when you're using the creams, People are telling us that they're actually seeing physical regeneration, not just slowing aging, but actually reversing aging. Because I think that the whole process we call aging, uh, people think about the clock, is not an inevitable thing at all. I think, in fact, the idea of tissue regeneration and not only zero senescence, but reversal is actually what happens almost immediately as soon as you start taking Myco D2. I mean, that's the message we have to get on. You are what you, you put in your body. And we've been, I mean, let, let me ask you, I mean, how can, can people, how, over what period of time can they detoxify? Well, can I don't think Michael detoxification D2? is, if you're taking the uh, Myco D2, I think you need to uh, pull up the heavy metals, and heavy metals we use our Keeler Max and, and our organic uh, non-acid wash zeolite. If you're pulling out chemicals, we use NutriDefense, which is a anhydrous uh We use uh, Xenoestrogen Detox, and then our things like uh, Cell Detox Glutathione, Acetyl Glutathione, Long-Acting Alpha Lipoic Acid, and our Regenerex, which is a kind of like a, a best combination of uh, in, in gene inducers to, to induce the antioxidant and Phase two detoxification pathways. Then our life support for Phase two detox. Our SGS well, let, let me ask you something like for your listeners. Let me let me bring it down to my level a little bit. You you're too brilliant for me, Bill, and I mean that as a compliment. If if we if these heavy metals are destroying hair and skin, right, and our mitochondria, right. could ergothionine be a chelator to pull these heavy metals out? Well, that's what its primary purpose is. The ergothionine transporter is a transporter of uh, of free iron. In fact, that's one of its primary purposes is ergothionine, right? Well, it's one of them. We, 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 we're thinking about that because we have evidence now that we can mobilize the iron pools, that your iron is dysfunctional in certain areas of the body, right. and we move it into a functional area. But my question is that um, you talked about uh, reducing exposure, but we are exposed. We have to detoxify. And so we, no matter what age we are, whether we're in our 90s or 70s or 60s or age 10, yeah. we need to detoxify. Detoxify, and so well, that's a process that the earlier we start, the better we are. Well, and one of the things I think you'd find too, because for example, in order to form plaque in your arteries, which I call acne of your artery walls, 
Uh, and most of the time, there's less than 5% of the, of the cross-sectional area of the artery blocked by a plaque. You need uh, free iron, uh, you need nanobacteria, and you need uh, perhaps other metals and oxidized fatty acids like trans fats and non-ornial hydroxycholesterol. And uh, the problem is that uh, we can induce soluble ICAM-1 and 2 and, uh, and uh, other vasoactive uh, genes and so on to cause plaque formation that eventually causes macrophages to eat these microglobules and form foam cells and precipitate the extrinsic uh, clotting pathway to form plaque. So we know exactly what causes it now. The problem is free iron is, is key there and other heavy metals. And if you transport the iron into proper... Uh, depots that don't have free iron in an unbound form uh, out there causing the Fenton reaction, you immediately uh, dampen things down. Like, for example, I put a protocol together for a lady the other day that has uh, early diagnosed progressive uh, Parkinson's disease. And we now know that if you give intravenous glutathione, you can literally reverse Parkinson's symptoms within a half an hour. Dr. Perlmutter has a video up. But I think Myco D2 actually, and we've already seen this in people, reverses peripheral neuropathy, Parkinson's disease, and ALS because all these are metabolic disorders where free iron is the key. And I think the same thing with skin damage uh, caused by, by the sunlight, that free iron is the primary factor that catalyzes the Fenton reaction that causes the skin damage in the DNA. Well, we know, you know, at John Hopkins School of Medicine, Snyder, who's the chairman of neuroscience, says that ergothionine is equal to glutathione, if not more powerful than glutathione. So I know they're, that Perlmutter is rejecting um, glutathione, but we have data now using at Harvard that we've actually reversed the symptoms of Parkinson's disease with, a, you know, with a, a product that's well, yeah. very similar to Myco D2. Well, you're upstream. You're upstream of it. You actually, before the free radicals are even generated, you get rid of the primary driver, which is a free iron, in the, uh, that causes a Fenton reaction. So the uh, glutathione basically tries to capture the free radical after it's generated. You're upstream and actually stop it from even being generated. Well, but, you know, one of the things we're seeing is increased hair growth in people, and could that be an iron reaction? Is iron involved in hair growth? Uh, and if well, we iron have three radicals in, with a, 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 yeah. iron plus three, you're going to lose, you know, you're not going to have good nutrition to your hair follicle. Well, it, what happens is uh, free iron puts the hair follicle into the senescent phase or, or G phase. So that's probably why is that you, when you get elevations of free iron, which we see also in males with male pattern baldness, they're actually you put their cells into a senescence or G phase. And that's probably what's going on there, that they pulls it out of that G phase and the cells, the follicles start to grow again. Probably a little too much, uh, Dr. Husband. So I want you to give us the latest research on what you guys have been doing uh, on uh, diabetes, on telomeres, on all kinds of stuff that you're that is either brewing and results are coming or results are already published. What's happening? Well, uh, I'd like to give it a little promo for my company, Entia Biosciences. The stock symbol is Ergo, E-R-G-O, which is fantastic, that the SEC gave us Ergo, which is ergothionine. Uh, we just launched, well, launched, we, we're getting our 120-day results from the diabetes study uh, down in the Caribbean. We have 30 patients enrolled down there, and what we've seen is that we are mobilizing the function iron pools uh, we just got we had 90 day data now we have 120 day data and these patients are not on iron supplements but their iron is going up their iron levels in the blood as well as the iron saturation <clears throat> so we think that the body has blockades of iron in different locations maybe in the particular end of the system the liver maybe in the fat tissue, maybe in the bone marrow. So, because these patients are not on iron, where did the iron come from? And we, we sent the data to our statistician at Harvard Medical School, and right. he came back and said, your data is statistically significant, that the iron is going up, and we're going to include that in a paper that we're writing on Parkinson's disease. So we're going to have preliminary data on the iron mobilization aspect of, of the food, the medical food, 
And of course, Michael D2 is very similar to what we're using down there. We've increased yeah. the dosing of D2 to a higher level because it's an experimental study. But uh, when you take the pills, you just add an extra pill, you're getting the same amount of vitamin D2. And with Hollick's uh, announcement that vitamin D2 is as good as D2 and D3 supplements, we think we're on to something. But we've yeah, had patients, also, for example, a lady who's 38 years old, whose uh, iron saturation went from 20 to 50 percent in 90 days. Now, of course, we could have gone up a lot quicker, but that's very significant, and it's been across the board. And the other thing that was very significant, Bill, is that the HDL went up in all of these patients. So the ones that had the iron go up, the positive you know, cholesterol, HDL went up, and it's protecting the patients against atherosclerosis. Yeah, it's really interesting. Iron is a big deal. Uh, well, one of the other things that uh, people should think about quantum functional medicine is that uh, iron levels increase in any tissue that becomes autoimmune. So if you're looking at autoimmune uh, thyroiditis or autoimmune uh, pancreatitis, and you actually biopsy the tissue, what you'll find is that the uh, stains to look for uh, free iron particles uh, increase in that target organ. So there's a change in, in not only the uh, uh, antigens that are expressed on the cell surface, but also the concentration of the of the pathological forms of iron present in those organs. So it's not surprising that when you give Micro D2, you start to stabilize those populations of the right forms of iron so the mitochondria can function properly. And on the other hand, it can create new hemoglobin molecule to carry oxygen. Uh, but it also stops the maladaptive forms that can cause plaque, DNA damage, and actual cellular aging because iron is like, a, is like the, uh, the sparks that actually start the fire in your mitochondria. Without iron, your mitochondria don't work at all. Yeah, well, that's the yin and yang. I mean, you need iron, you need oxygen, but at the same time, you'll explode if you don't cool off the nuclear reactor called the mitochondria. So you've got to cool it off. And I think that ergothionine is a cooling off process as well as vitamin D2. The other yeah. significant thing that we realize from the iron data, if you look at diseases like autism and multiple sclerosis, those diseases are iron deficiency diseases. And yeah, so and, we uh, may have an actual rejuvenation for multiple sclerosis and autism, if, if that's true. And well, of course, doing probably is, you should have started it a lot earlier before the disease pr presents itself. But who knows, we may have a way of regenerating tissue in autism and multiple sclerosis with, with the iron, you know, with, with moving the functional pools of iron around in the body. Well, I think also those pools also have uh, something to do with cancer, because all diseases uh, autoimmune disease and cancer have a metabolic problem where they have abnormal sugar metabolism. They also have abnormal iron. And uh, all tissues that get uh, abnormal forms of iron go into a low redox state and become acidotic. And they also develop a differential electropotential difference to the surrounding tissues. So like Dr. Van Nordenstrom research at Karolinska over the past 45 years in Sweden has shown if you put microelectrodes, you can actually pick up a microvoltage across the the tumor and even a harmonic frequency indicating that the tumor uh, has a different potential than the surrounding tissues. And it generates a fibronectin capsule, so it's my feeling that uh, iron and sugar metabolism are tied intimately with the, the two branches, autoimmune diseases and metabolic diseases that we don't think are autoimmune, like uh, uh, ALS, where the Fenton reaction is triggered by free iron in the anterior horn cell, uh, and in Parkinson's disease. And uh, multiple sclerosis, where you get low iron levels, are because it's being sequestered into abnormal physiological attack that causes oligosyndrocyte um, uh, apoptosis and, and death, so you get dysmyelination. So I think there's a link there. And um, as we start to realize, when we get micro D2, um, that's why I say if we can ever develop the technology for an ergo scan, an a, uh, MRI scan with an ergo radio pharmaceutical, we'd be able to actually track tissue regeneration after trauma, after surgery, and after recovery from a stem cell transplant. Well, what we're developing, uh, another thing in NTA Biosciences, we're now uh, developing, uh, and we have uh, a proposal with Penn State University to develop an antibody to ergothionine. So we may be, in the next six months, able to take a blood sample or even a finger stick or a urine sample and measure ergo levels. 
which would be unbelievable wow. if we could do that. No one in the world can do that yet. Um, is to actually see if you if you could detoxify and rejuvenate by taking a whole food. And if you take uh, Myco D2 or one of our other products in Parkinson's disease, and we can actually show that the symptoms go away and the level of ergo goes up in your red cell, that would be unbelievable in my mind. Yeah, well, no one's exactly, been able to yeah. do that before. Yeah, you can measure markers like you mentioned 8 hydroxy, 2 prime deoxy guanosine, T bars, and DNA adducts like peroxynitrate. And if you can measure those and you can do scans like an MRI scan, an fMRI to look for myelination. Because you're going to see dysmyelination between the secondary neuron and the tectum of the midbrain and the uh, uh, tertiary motor neuron in the anterior horn cell. You can see that on an MRI scan. So uh, I think the technologies are going to allow us to, to literally, in the next few years, literally stop human aging. I know people think that's kind of an outlandish statement, but literally deep space exploration to Mars or anywhere else, even in our solar system, requires us to conquer the whole process of what aging is. Uh, there will be no space travel without the conquering of the process of aging. It just won't occur. Yeah, well, you, you have to put people into a dormancy state. That's what you're thinking about, right? Well, interestingly, I discovered this years ago because I did the first test back in 33 uh, years ago about the proterolin challenge test from Germany, and it's where you give uh, TRH, uh, proterolin, TRH, and it turns out that TRH, according to my theory, is the primary cause of diabetes. And most of the TRH is coming from the argentin cells in the jejunum or upper small bowel. Uh, it's present in pretty well every organ in newborns and in fetuses, but it drops off and it's only present in the reproductive organs and in the jejunum and the pancreas, and mainly the delta cells. And when you have a deficiency of TRH, it uh, causes the uh, momental fat cells and the central body fat cells around the internal organs and the skin around the central body organs to produce abnormal uh, prostaglandins and like interleukin-17, etc. And these actually cause insulin resistance. So we now know that taking ergo will restore peptide levels in the gut. And peptide levels like cholecystokinin and TRH regulate insulin resistance and uh, satiety and uh, regulate blood sugar, including glucagon and insulin output, to reduce insulin resistance. So we know that diabetes can be upset by abnormal gut peptide uh, probiotics if you have the wrong gut bacteria. But we really think that diabetes is a peptide disorder of the jejunum and the pancreas, primarily the jejunum that actually, if you normalize ergo, you're going to normalize. So when I, when I give people that have diabetes MycoD2, we see the reversal of their diabetes within days to weeks. It just goes away. Well, it's been an interesting show, Bill. It's always stimulating to be with you. Yeah, I'm really amazed and uh, really proud uh, we have you on regularly, Dr. Hausman. Again, if you're not taking Myco D2, why? Uh, Teladerm, if you want your skin to not age, especially with the new high-energy C and D bands and the ultraviolet light outside, you want to stop from the scalar damage of our toxic world. Again, as the uh, old saying is, uh, one of our doctors in the Academy of Environmental Medicine, if you don't detox, you die. I want to add to that, if you don't, if your cells don't adapt and repair. It exceeds the damage done every day, you age. Take my goodie 2 Intelliderm cream and soap. It's amazing. Everybody should be using it every day. All right, thanks, Dr. Husband. We'll have you back on soon. When we should have the next show, okay? Uh, yeah, stay right there.